Are you a manufacturing company looking to upgrade your machining center? Look no further than Grobe's Mill and Turn 5-axis machines that are in a league of their own. With a unique retractable spindle, it virtually eliminates the chance for collisions while requiring less floor space. Our versatile machines offer more standard options with a wide range of automation, all at an affordable cost. Choose Grobe's Mill and Turn 5-axis machines. Go to grobegroup.com to get more information. Go to grobgroup.com to get more information. How long was Neil Armstrong actually on the moon? When did Europe start speaking English? Did Marco Polo really go to China? CuriosityStream is the streaming service for all things history, plus science, wildlife, and more. What's the real story behind the Mona Lisa? We've got that. What caused the collapse of Rome? We know. Where did we find mankind's earliest ancestor? Come find out. For the holidays, give the gift of curiosity with 25% off gift cards for your curious cohorts. It's holiday shopping season at curiositystream.com slash gift. Well, hello, my paranormal peeps, and welcome back to another Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. This is the Bigfoot edition. My name is Matt Harvey. I am the host of the Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. I am also the founder and lead investigator with Deep Woods Paranormal. A little bit about me. I've been researching the paranormal for close to, well, over 30 years, but professionally almost 30 years, along with my wife, Amanda who I've started out dragging around to different homes, said to be on places and stuff like that. And so anyways, um, so that's pretty much about me. Uh, I've been doing Bigfoot research for almost 15 years now. Uh, I've had multiple sightings of Bigfoots. And uh, now by sightings, I mean, it was an encounter where I could say that could be, could not be anything else but a Bigfoot. And I always say, you have to have your own encounter. I don't care if you're a believer, a skeptic, or whatever, somewhere in the middle. You have to have an encounter, and then you can apply this to anything. Ghost, Bigfoot, UFOs, whatever, anything paranormal. Uh, you have to have an encounter where you can say that couldn't be anything else, but I know you guys hear me t- say that almost every episode, but uh, for the new people, we've got a lot of new listeners. Uh, thank you guys for joining us and subscribing and downloading our our podcast. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you for your support over on our YouTube channel too. Uh, we're doing really well over there. So thank you guys again. So anyways, let's get into this. Um, first off, some news. Um, Amanda and I have officially formed a business. We will be doing Deep Woods Productions, which will not only include the paranormal research, but it'll include uh, survival stuff too, because it kind of ties into the Bigfoot research and I'll get into that in a minute. But we'll also be doing other things like documentaries and stuff like that. I want to do a documentary on the history of downtown Bryan. It's uh, just basically we live less than a mile from it. And uh, downtown Bryan just has so much interesting history. And I'd like to interview some of the uh, shop owners and stuff like that that have been there for a long time and hear their stories. I think that'll be interesting. So we will be kind of expanding out to doing different things, not just paranormal, but survival, probably um, stuff about us, our travels, because a man and I do travel quite a bit and stuff like that. So that'll be coming. So keep your eye out for that. We're going to start creating multiple uh, YouTube channels, maybe multiple podcasts too talking about different things, different subjects and whatever else. So uh, if you haven't gone over already, I just set up the Deep Wood Survival podcast. Um, That's doing pretty well as to be expected. And, you know, nobody knows about it yet. So it's getting some downloads, but not a whole lot. So if you do me a favor, if you're into survival, camping, hiking, fishing, anything to do with outdoors, um, pew pews, uh, I don't want to say the other word but uh, going to look for things and uh, bringing home stuff, uh, trophies, if you will, that hopefully you're eating and consuming everything. Um, You know, just going out there to pew pew an animal for no reason. Um, 
and then um, survival and prepping stuff, um, gear reviews, all that fun stuff will be over there. So if you're interested in that, please go listen to that. Uh, I've done a couple of those podcasts so far. I'm going to try and do one a day here to get that built up so that there's quite a few for you to listen to. But uh, again, thank you guys all for your support. We really appreciate it on both these channels and on our YouTube channels and through our Facebook and other social media. Thank you guys again. I can't say that enough. You guys are amazing. So let's get into this. Okay. So um, people ask me all the time, what if you did a stealth camping trip to go look for Bigfoot? And I kind of laughed at first. I'm like, how the hell would I, excuse me, how the heck would I do that? And uh, so I thought about it. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? That does kind of make sense. If you said, if you go into a Bigfoot territory, not like Joe's, but another place that was more secluded away from, completely away from people, and you set up a tent and then you set up camo, uh, t- camo uh, either t- tarps or camo, they have, it's kind of like a, it's almost like a tarp, but it's see-through. It's like a camo blanket almost um, that you can basically hang from trees and it it basically makes it harder for them to see you. Now, I kind of talked about this on my survival podcast too, but Bigfoots, I mean, and you got to take all this with a grain of salt. There's no proof of any of this. Um, So that's one thing you have to remember. Just take everything I say with a grain of salt. Like I said, you have to have your own experience and you have to come up to your own conclusions about Bigfoots. I mean, there is no experts out there. There's nobody that knows everything about these things. Otherwise, we'd have one in a museum somewhere probably. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about the GOV um, at all, but I'm pretty sure that they have some live specimens or multiple live specimens probably in different places that they're studying uh, for probably military research and whatever else. So uh, stealth, let's talk about stealth Bigfoot camping here a little bit more in detail. What would you have to do to really mask yourself to make sure that the Bigfoots didn't really know you were there? What if you went into an area where they had blinds and maybe that you found if you're lucky enough maybe you found a structure or maybe even uh, what looks like a survival shelter um, made out of sticks and and stuff like that what if you found that what if you found fresh prints all around that you could put up maybe a hammock and again use uh, different types of camo netting all around your tent to disguise your location, um, you'd have to be severely quiet. You would have to essentially uh, maybe spray yourself with the spray that they use for hunting um, that would remove your scent. And then you'd have to make sure you weren't in a heavy winded area where it's, you know, something's blowing your scent. All You can't get rid of your scent completely, but you don't want to have that anywhere. And then you'd have to have food that you could consume that wouldn't probably have to be cooked i would imagine because if you are sitting there cooking you, they're going to know you're there i mean they're going to smell anybody could smell it animals are have a very good sense of smell i think bigfoots have a really good sense of smell as well i think their vision their hearing their um sense of smell is probably way advanced from us way more better uh, this is just my theories. These are all just theories. So just take this with a grain of salt. Like I said, if you're a non-believer and you're listening, you're rolling your eyes, you're going, oh, how do you know that? And just experience things that have happened to me out in the field um, where I've seen a Bigfoot or whatever, haven't ever really taken very many by surprise. They took us by surprise uh, most of the time when we've I've had encounters, let's just say. But I would essentially also think that maybe you hear about hunters all the time. They put ghillie suits on and they put a deer stand up in a tree and they go up there and they're sitting there hunting for a Bigfoot and they're being quiet and whatever else. They're up there for hours and hours and hours. Sometimes they stay overnight in these these, uh, stands, which is insane. I would imagine, I don't know how they would, how you do it. You have to be 
like Superman be up there and hang out all night. Um, but if you're in a ghillie suit and the Bigfoot comes walking by and doesn't know what the tree stand is, you have an op opportunity to possibly document one. So you'd have to sit up there, I would imagine, multiple, multiple nights. You would have to do some research in the area, maybe not make a lot of noise. Essentially, um, you just take up reports and do some day searching around, find some foot, fresh footprints, see where there's tree structures, see where there's activity at, and really kind of talk to as many witnesses as you can. And then you set up that tree stand kind of in the middle of all that. Maybe you have multiple people out there uh, spread apart. And maybe you have a walkie-talkie that goes into your ear. You have a little attachment that goes into your ear. So when it squawks, you don't hear it. But you can whisper into it and communicate with each other in case the other one's experiencing something. That's something I think you could do, um, especially if you're wearing a ghillie suit. Another thing is maybe you don't even take a tent or anything like that. Maybe you find a little area where, you know, there's there's some brush or whatever, some trees um, that are kind of in a circle or whatever. Put a ghillie suit on. And then essentially, maybe that's where you hang out all night. Maybe leaning against a tree um, and, and hope that maybe one stumbles by you. And then maybe you have a, a camera down somewhere in your lap or whatever so it's not seen. But... Um, yeah, I mean, that would have to be like a super close encounter, I would imagine. But that would be cool. I think that's something that I'm going to look into in the future is doing some Bigfoot stealth camping. Uh, if you follow uh, Steve Walls on YouTube here, or if you follow anybody else that does this, um, essentially stealth camping, I should have said this when I started. Stealth camping means that you're going into a location, and this doesn't apply to what I'm trying to do. I'm not going into a location I shouldn't be in, but these got people go into a location they shouldn't be in and essentially try and spend the night there without getting caught in a nutshell. They camp, they eat, and then they basically film themselves doing it, and then they go to bed and then get up in the next morning and try and get out of there before anybody realizes that they were even there. And most of them are pretty good about not leaving a trace. I know Steve Walls, I really like him because he goes through and cleans up not only his own stuff, but everybody else's that, you know, is out there. So anyways, that's stealth camping. If you want to know more, look it up on YouTube or do a Google search or whatever. Okay. Uh, somebody keeps asking, people keep asking me the same questions. Where do Bigfoots live? Well, let me see. I'm going to go this way. Um, let me move out of the way. All right. So on this map, we're where you see this Bigfoot just over my shoulder, we're just a little bit down here. So we're real close to Bigfoot activity. Um, there's more, probably more Bigfoot activity than this in Texas, but from the Louisiana border all the way up here into Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, um, this is all Bigfoot territory. And what people don't realize is on the other side, let me scoot back in, there's other sightings over here. They're not as, as many. And then at the bottom of Texas, too, there's a lot of sightings. So, I mean, I've done multiple uh, podcasts where I talk about how to find Bigfoots and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, please go back and listen to some of our other podcasts where I go into detail. I actually use a map and I kind of show what I'm looking for and uh, go from there. Um, okay, so how do I find Bigfoot? Kind of the same thing. Um, witnesses, you sh here's how I do this. Normally, I look for reports online. I look and see what's the newest reports, where are they reported, and I start to build. I take those reports and I put them on a map. I put them on a Google map. I put a pen there. And then as I hear more and more reports, um, I might go into a town or something like that and just put a notice out that I'm there and ask if any Bigfoot witnesses want to come forward. And if you do, you know, you can always contact us too. Uh, if you're in Texas here and you want to talk to me about uh, some of your Bigfoot reports or, you know, an encounter that you had or whatever, I'd love to hear it. In fact, our audience would love to hear it too. But um, yeah, so that's what I do. I go and I try to meet with people 
and then our clientele like Joe, he his hair is like Bigfoot Central. So he's constantly um, talking to his neighbors and talking to other people in town about Bigfoot and getting reports and, and trying to steer us in the right direction. Lean on us. We are here for you. You matter. You are not alone. Are you feeling overwhelmed? Not sure where to turn? The National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is there for you. 24-7. Call or text 988 or chat at 988sc.org. Whether you're having an emergency or you know someone who needs support now, they can help you take the next step towards finding hope and healing. There is hope. 988sc.org. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the chumba life. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry. Sorry. We're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no. Lucky Land Casino. With cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. And so we can plot those Bigfoot sightings on a map, and we can get a better idea of where we want to try and investigate and do a night investigation and stuff like that. So that's the first part of it, is just getting all the reports, finding a location with multiple sightings uh, within, you know, a couple, four or five miles of each other, maybe a little bit more, maybe up to 10 miles. Because, those, you know, if, if you think about it, these guys, these Bigfoots are just hunters. All they're doing is going around basically looking for food, scavenging food, water, and then doing whatever else they do. Who knows if they have hobbies or I know there's been some sightings of Bigfoot's watching kids play basketball or playing or whatever. They seem to be kind of interested in looking into windows to see what's going on. It's probably like a TV for them. They're, they're watching to see what's, what's going on on the reality channel. Hey, there's a human. <laughs> Let me peek in their window and see what they're doing. And they scare the heck out of us. And then we, you know, we scream or whatever and they run. But um, so finding reports plotting them on a map, and then going out to those locations. And usually during the day, I usually go out to those locations during the day. I look around and I look for signs. I look for hair. I look for footprints. I look for branches broken off way too high to be a normal animal. Anything about above about five, six feet, um, you're looking at a bigger animal. Now, in Texas, they say all the bears are gone. I don't believe that. I think there's still some bears out here. They also say the wolf, uh, that certain types of wolf breeds are not here. And um, I talk to hunters all the time. I just saw one the other day. <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. So, I mean, these guys are out in the field. They know. They're witnessing it. So that's, that's important, getting out there and finding an area where it looks like it's active. Um, so I talked about Bigfoot. Okay, so I said I would talk about Bigfoot and survival, how they kind of coexist. Well, if you think about it, when I leave the house, whatever I have with me is whatever I have for the trip I'm taking, be it a day trip, a camping trip for the night or two nights or a week or whatever it's going to be. I have to have whatever supplies I need. So I'm taking you know, everything I need to survive that amount of time with me so when i go out into the field if i just have a day pack on or whatever um and i get lost in the, in the wilderness i need to be able to start a fire probably um if i'm going to get stuck overnight which hasn't happened yet i've been pretty lucky but i've gotten turned around a few times sometimes when you get into these forests it, it just you it just all looks the same even though you put a mark on a tree or you hang a ribbon Sometimes you don't you hang them a little too far apart, 
and you look back and you're like, okay, where's that other dang ribbon? I know it was here somewhere. And then you, you think you went this way or you think you went that way. And all of a sudden you're off the track and then you can't find any of them. So you're trying to find your way back to where you were. And then you're completely confused because you're looking around trying to find that ribbon. Yeah, it gets, it gets a little frustrating. And then especially when cell phones don't work out in the, in the wilderness, that happens about mm, 80% of the time. I'll be out there and want to call Joe or I want to text somebody or something um, to let them know what's going on. Hey, I just found this or I found that. And I'm trying to be stealthy about it and be quiet so that if there is a Bigfoot in the area, I'm not disturbing them and not having them feel more like, you know, this guy's loud and obnoxious. I'm out of here. So, yeah, I mean, it's real easy to get lost out in the forest, especially out like by Joe's. I mean, you can walk, you, you can look around and there's just miles and miles and miles and miles of forest. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. And uh, if you're not careful and you don't have what you need when you're out there, you can get yourself into a, a real trouble. Um, you know, it might be 85 during the day, but sometimes out here in Texas, especially kind of towards the winter months, it'll go from like 80 during the day in the, in the fall to, you know, 40 or 50s at night, which, you know, it's not that cold. But when you don't have a blanket or you don't have anything else and you're in shorts and a t-shirt, it can be kind of cold. So, you know, things, that's stuff that I carry with me. I've gone through my, my uh, Bigfoot bag before, the bag I carry with me. But, um, you know, having a compass, having a map of where you're at, or at least a general idea of where you're at, or having somebody that knows the area that lives there or is around in that area is, is very important. Um, knowing the location, I always say you need to know your location. Even if you've never been there and you're just walking off into the forest because you think you see a tree structure or whatever and you just want to go in and document it, you still need to know your location. You need to know where you came from and how to get back out. Uh, there's a lot of people that get lost in the forest and some of them are never found. Um, and that's a whole different thing. But anyways, so when I'm out there, like at Joe's, um, the last time I was out there, if you watch our, our my uh, videos of camping on Joe's property for two days, I was completely off grid. I had no cell phone, no electricity, no water. Um, I had to make my own food. And essentially, I had, you know, of course, I set up the tent for shelter, which I took a very large tent, which I shouldn't have. It was just me. I didn't need a 10 person tent for what I was doing. Um, recently I've gotten a new brand new tent and I'll be, uh, maybe doing a gear review on it here over on the survival channel. If you want to go over there and take a look at that, it'll probably be up in a couple three or four weeks. Anyways. So I was pretty much in a survival situation. Yeah. I could have gone down and got water or whatever from Walmart or whatever. And then I had my car right there, which was great. But in the middle of the night, oh my God. I had a 30 degree sleeping bag. I had my um, sleeping pad. I slept on a cot. So it was up off the ground. And it was extremely hot that day. I think that was Friday night. Or no, that was sorry. That was Saturday night. And this is a summer tent. And it had a tarp over it. Um, but the whole top is wide open. And it went from 85 and comfortable actually too hot. It was very humid to no humidity. And it dropped down probably almost to the teens that night. I froze my yang yangs off. Um, I went to sleep with two sets of socks on jeans, a, you know, of course a shirt and, and a heavy duty jacket. Um, I had a beanie on my head and then I had my hood pulled up over my head. This jacket's like a, uh, down rated down to like negative 20 or negative 30, whatever it is. And I seriously froze even inside the sleeping bag. I was so cold. Um, that I ended up hiking back over to my car and I was scavenging around at three o'clock in the morning. Of course, that's when I had that weird whoop, whoop, noise and I'm looking around, I'm going, okay, that's not a person. That's not an animal that I know of. 
And uh, so, yeah, I ended up grabbing a blanket and ended up having going out the next day to uh, Walmart and getting a much heavier duty blanket to put over me. Uh, I basically wrapped myself up. I was in a mummy sleeping bag, but that, you know, if I hadn't, you know, had the things I needed, I could have, you know, gone into, um, I kind of froze, the, you know, froze, could have gone in shock and whatever else. So that's why it's important to have the right gear with you when you go out to these locations. I did bring a space heater with me. I had plugged it into a, I knew it was going to be off grid. So I took a, a battery bank with me and I, I plugged it in here before I left and it turned right on just fine. Of course, as soon as you got out in the field, <laughs> plug it in and it seems like electronics never work in the field. This is the weirdest things between cameras malfunctioning, audio recorders malfunctioning, um, and now this. Um, so I froze that night. Um, I got a little smarter the next night, but if I had been better prepared, I would have essentially been better off. So, and then also having the right gear. I mean, I couldn't, you know, I started a bonfire on his property, which he was okay with. I burned a bunch of his old stumps and, and, uh, some old brush that he had laying around and from the trees that they cleared. But, uh, you know, if I'd moved the fire just a little bit closer to the tent and kept it going throughout the night, it might've been a little bit warmer, um, uh, something I could have fixed. And, uh, you know, I can go on with this, this survival stuff and forever, but, like I said, if you're in the, in the woods with Bigfoot, looking for Bigfoot, you have to be prepared because a lot of the times you're up in an area where you're in the middle of nowhere. You're very far from everybody. There's no people around. And you're essentially, um, if something happens, you fall and get hurt, you whatever, you know, you run, you run out of food or snacks for the day or you get caught out, out there, you can't make your way all the way back to your car you're stuck out there and you have to be ready for that. You have to make sure that you have whatever you think you're going to need um, to basically survive through the night. If you have to stay the night out there. Um, one thing I always carry with me is a light jacket, which keeps me pretty warm, um, especially during the spring and summer months. I don't ever usually wear it, but every once in a while it gets cold out here. But another thing that happens is we're in Texas, we get pop-up storms here and there, and it just starts pouring rain out of nowhere. You don't have a jacket, and you're going to get soaked. And if you're not wearing the right kind of pants that are either water-resistant or waterproof, or that you've sprayed um, with whatever to make sure it's waterproof or at least water-resistant, um, you know, you're, you're just going to get wet. And nobody likes to be wet, even if it's 60 degrees out and you're, you're wet, you're going to become, you can have a good chance of becoming hyperthermic, hyperthermic, excuse me. And so these are all things that you have to basically prepare for um, when you go out there. You have to have skills. You have to know how to read a compass. You have to know how to read a map. You have to essentially know how to navigate through the forest. You have to know how to find water if you need it. I always carry a water filter with me just because I don't want to carry 10 pounds, 15, 20 pounds worth of water on my back. And it's just annoying and it, it slows me down. And of course, it makes me hot and everything else. So like I said, your, your clothes are kind of part of your survival gear when you're out there. You know, even if it's supposed to be 100 degrees, you probably should wear some kind of pants because at night, there's a good chance it's going to get cold and have a jacket with you, even though it's under degrees, you might get cold. And there's also a chance for rain and whatever else. So anyway, so that's how survival kind of plays into the Bigfoot research. If you're, if you're out in the field, you're out in the wilderness and you don't have what you need, um, and you absolutely need that item, be it an ax or a knife or a fire starter or a, another way to fight, start fires, or you just can't get something burning, because it's just wet and that happens a lot out here in Texas and you don't have come some kind of fire starter that burns hot enough to dry the material, you, you know, you're not going to have very much fun. So anyways, um, all right, guys, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you guys so much for listening. I appreciate your support. Again, if you want to go check out our Deep Woods Survival channel, 
And uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing, we talk about, like I said, everything from everything outdoors, camping, hiking, fishing, pew pews, um, and uh, prep preparing and gear reviews. And all. we're going to be doing all that over there. So, and if and we're also going to have a YouTube channel, we'll be linked to this channel. So you guys can check that out as well. All right, guys, you have a great night. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you again for your support and your comments. Uh, if you want to come on to our show, please contact us either through this, this channel, the this YouTube channel. You can leave a comment below. Um, you can go to our website, deepwoodsparanormal.com. Um, our, our social media has my cell phone number, our email address, and you can message us through that way if you want to. We have a lot of people that do that. They want to message us through Facebook, which is great. That's fine. And then uh, also email or whatever. So lots of ways to contact us. Uh, like I said, we're always looking for guests to come on and talk about their Bigfoot experiences, or if you just had some kind of other paranormal experience. Uh, we love to talk to everybody. Uh, we want to hear about your story. Again, there's no judgment. So thank you guys again. We appreciate you. You guys have a good night. Ryan here and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. A lifetime of hard work, children laughing in the kitchen family photos on a restaurant wall, a legacy that lives on. It all comes from the power of a conversation, like the one Tommy Hall had with First Horizon Bank about taking over his father's Charleston-based restaurant business. Now the table is set for a whole new generation. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com Tommy. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC.